there. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time that we can relax and craft together. So tonight we are going to finish up our raven embroidery. It is looking so nice. I love this so much. It's been fun to stitch with all one color. There's tons of texture in this one with cross hatching and uh, it's been really, really fun. So I think we'll finish it up. So, all right, you guys, let's get going. Okay. I love this one so much. All right, so here's where we left off. Um, last night we finished the pumpkin. Uh, we didn't have anything of the pumpkin except for like the stem done. And uh, we did all of it, including this cross hatching, it managed to get that leaf in, and we're starting up the vine. So all that's left is this vine over here. And then we'll be done with this guy. So let's see, we already have it threaded. And we're at the part of just doing some lazy daisies right away. We set ourselves up to just get cracking right away here. So that's kind of nice. Hope everyone is having a lovely Friday. It was gloomy and rainy here, but oh well, I was inside anyway. <laughs> um, all right, there we go. Uh, all your orders went out today. Uh, we're, go we're having that sale still, and I just did an inventory of all the kits we have left. We're doing a 40% off uh, kit sale, and we are running low on many of them, and we're sold out of a few. So uh, um, we're switching over the fabric um, soon. So we're having that 40% off sale on the ones that um, have our old fabric in. Hold on here. My comments are being funny. All right. French knot and back on the back stitch here. Okay. Oh, Arlene says gloomy and pouring rain there. Yeah, it's gloomy. I don't think it's pouring rain here anymore, but it was wet outside all day for sure. Oh, Robin, I will check through the correspondence, like uh, your guys' emails uh, when we're done here and uh, see if there's anything we can do. We are out, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll check the emails. Ooh, in the 50s here, and, and you're freezing. Oh. <laughs> you guys, my comments are being super weird over here. Hold on. There we go. In the 50s, and you've been freezing. Yeah, I think, I think it was kind of 50s-ish here today. I didn't even go out, hardly, um, just to get the mail, and which is literally just opening my door, and then that's it. 
it's been uh, just rainy, like a cold, cold rain today. Of course, I take the floss off the needle. Uh, Lainey's asking, do I do I add a tearaway stabilizer to the back? I don't. Um, the only reason I would do something like that is if I was working on a really stretchy fabric, like a knit fabric, like, um, like a sweatshirt or something. Uh, in that case, I might use some sort of stabilizer. But if you're using woven fabric, like, um, like a muslin or cotton or, yeah, just some sort of, like, tightly woven fabric, uh, you shouldn't really need a stabilizer. But, yeah, for things that are stretchy... Um, a stabilizer is good to use. I oftentimes use, um, like, a, the, like, sulky stick and stitch, uh, which is where you can print the design directly onto the, like, sticky paper, and then you can stick that to the front of, you know, whatever you're stitching to, like a sweatshirt or something, and then you stitch right through that. That adds a little bit of support. Uh, for something super duper stretchy, though, I might put like an iron-on stabilizer on the back or something. But that's that's a last resort, because I don't like having all that extra stuff to have to stitch through and deal with. I would just kind of assess your fabric in that case. Like, am I using a really stretchy fabric or something that's so, like, wobbly that I'm not going to be able to keep it straight, something like that, then you might want a stabilizer. Right, there we go. Out of floss already, that didn't take long. It's those lazy daisy stitches just suck up the thread. Zoop. All right, and we have another one, I think, all ready to go here. Yep. Awesome. So I'm going to start with that French knot, I think, and then, I don't know, I guess we'll get going on that leaf. Kelly says it was 92 here in Bama yesterday. <laughs> oh, today we had a wonderful 80 degrees. Ooh, 80 sounds nice. But man, yeah, 92. We actually had like 90s. We had like a 92. I think it was 91 um, two days ago. Isn't that crazy? And then now it's 50s. All right, I think I'm just going to jump over and get this French knot. Then we'll jump and get the other French knot. Then we'll get the leaf. Thanks for the follows and shares, everyone, too. I appreciate it. Hey, Wanda. All right, let's hop up here. These leaves have been a little bit annoying because there's no, like, path to get back to where I started. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll like, go down the center, I think, and then, like, do one side and then see how far we get on the other side. And we'll have to travel to get down again. What I should have done is maybe just stitched up to here. And maybe ran out of floss by then, and then done the leave, and then just hopped over here and continued. But I don't know that. That seems kind of funny. Oh, Jackie says hello all tonight. I'm watching from my hotel room in Pennsylvania, visiting the Grands. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, the countdown for the new nephew is coming, so we'll get a visit, visit him soon, theoretically. All right, we'll do three more. 
four stitches here. I'm having a hard time predicting if we'll be done early tonight or if we'll be done like right on time tonight. This doesn't seem like that much to stitch yet. Um, but then it's like, oh, but we gotta do the lines inside the leaves and all that too. And there's kind of a lot, like a lot of surface area here. Like in my head, I'm like, ooh, we might get done early, but then I'm like, eee, I don't know. Ooh, we're just getting started, Kathy. Ooh, I might run out of thread by the time I get around to the other side. That would be perfect, because <laughs> then we can start fresh down here. Eh, we actually do have kind of a bit of flaw, a lot of floss left yet. At worst, we travel through the backs of some stitches and get back on the vine. So one more week um, for this pattern. Um, the pattern will still be available as a kid. It just won't be the embroidery of the month anymore with the freebie sticker that uh, comes with it this month. And the new embroidery of the month will be here on what? I think Monday's the first of the month. Next Monday. I think that's right. Oh, Samantha said I had to get the candy apple one. So cute. Yeah, we were, we ran out of that one. So all, actually almost all, not, not, not everyone, but like most of the kits will be back in October. I know a ton of them, um, a few of them sold out already. We're having that 40% off sale on all of our current kits. Uh, cause we'll be switching the fabric around. Um, for the beginning of October with our new fabric, which is that white fabric. Here again is like the comparison. So here's here's the new white fabric. Um, you can see the lines like really, really well on it. Uh, that's what's going to be the nice benefit. First is like here's like the old one. It's just a little lighter. Uh, if you handle this a lot, it'll, it'll fade a little bit. That shouldn't happen with um, the white. So we'll be switching all the kits to the white uh, in October. So that's why we're having the big sale on our current kits. And if you're watching live, we're doing our live spe special still, which is, um, order $20 or more from the shop during the live or a little bit after 15 minutes or so after, and I will throw in a free mystery gift. You don't need to add it to the cart or anything. I will just check the timestamp of the order basically and toss one in for ya. So it's a good time to stock on, stock up on kits, especially if you like the uh, unbleached fabric, cause that's what we're, be, that's what we're gonna be changing. All right, I'm almost out of floss, but not quite. I don't know if I have, I'm going up this way. I don't know if I have enough to get my way back down. Yeah, I can probably get like three or four stitches and we're gonna do it. So, all right, finishing that and I'm gonna just travel down the center here just to get back down to the vine. And there we go. No thread wasted. For the least amount that I can. So I'm just gonna do this back stitch to run out because I'm definitely not gonna have enough to do uh, these um, lazy daisies up here. Or the French knots. So I think we'll get two more back stitches and that will be that. We're getting there with this guy though. 
yeah, so the candy apple, the, the caramel apple, um, that will be back in stock in October. Okay, I'm really stretching to get one more stitch out of here. That was maybe stupid, but oh well. Let's flip it over and weave in that end. And if you have ordered a kit from the sale, it is in the mail. They have all gone out. So you should get it in a couple days. And I know some of you have already gotten yours. Boop. Okay. Flip. I'm gonna have to get some more, oops, some more thread out here. So I did end up only using two skeins. I'm just on my second skein. The kit comes with four skeins. So there's, there's, there should be plenty uh, to finish this design. You'll get a little extra in there too. Oh, funny. Samara says, I started working on this one at work and now they want to start a crafting group. <laughs> that sounds so fun. I actually taught an uh, embroidery class for, um, for Target Corporate, actually. They, uh, I got to do a Zoom class with a bunch of their staff. They do just fun things for their staff like that. Craft groups and that's kind of neat. Zoop. All right. All right, I'm gonna weave in, let's get these lazy daisies here. Shimmy sham our way up the rest of this then. I think this might be enough enough floss to finish. Except for the um, single strands, we gotta do that yet. Oh nice, Samara said I told him to check out Penguin Fish on YouTube and Facebook. That's awesome. Ooh. I was watching um, a cross stitcher on Twitch all day uh, today while I was working. I think, uh, oh my God, now I can't, I can't even remember what they're called. If Jenna comes on later, she'll know. I think it's, I think they're called pick stitch. She recommended me watch them and it was super enjoyable. Gotta watch them draw cross stitches, new cross stitches in a in a cross stitch program, the same cross stitch program that I have. So I'm I'm hoping to do some cross stitches soon too, some designs. So stay tuned. We might be doing some cross stitch here and there uh, at some point. But I've been kind of itching to do a, a cross stitch. They take for freaking ever though like if we were to do a cross stitch this size and let's say it was all filled in and let's say it was in color and, and whatever it would take us like a freaking month to do live <laughs> i'm thinking at least it's like if we did it every day live i'm telling you it would take probably a whole month to do it is uh it is crazy how long cross stitch takes at least, at least to me. If you're used to doing embroidery, cross stitch is going to feel like it takes years and years. <laughs> Which it sometimes does, I suppose. It's definitely more in the projects to have to just chill <laughs> with no deadline. That's, that's what cross stitch is in my head. Just get a chill. Like... After an hour, you've done maybe 50 stitches tops. <laughs> That's what it seems like, at least. I don't know. 50 little X's. But it is relaxing, and it would be fun to, to do. I have that... Oh, what do they call it? Oh, waste fabric. Uh, which is 
basically cross-stitch fabric where when you're done, you can actually pull the fabric out. Uh, so you would, uh, you would put your waist fabric onto something else. Like in my case, I want to do it with my jean shirt. Um, but yeah, then you can cross-stitch through this waist fabric and then pull the fabric out. I have some tips on how to use that from some cross-stitch uh, Facebook group that I'm in, and so I'm excited to, like, give it a try. But I'm, like, literally in the, I want to finish all these other projects first before I jump into that. So uh, I, I just finished knitting the cone of uh, cotton yarn that I had, uh, knitting that, that into washcloths. So I feel like that's a project that's doesn't exist in my brain anymore and I'm working on those I think I was talking about this yesterday but I, I was working on those doilies um, made out of um, excess embroidery floss I might finish one of those tonight I'm I have it all crocheted the doily the, it's the orange one um, and I'm almost done tucking in all the ends I mean I got a little ways to go and tucking in the ends but if I just want to chill tonight um, then I think I might get that one done. So I'll have two more after that, but uh, that's a lot done. And I have that knitted snake that I kind of want to move forward on, but I feel like after I get some of that those doilies done, I might, and if I'm working on that snake a little bit, I'll be in the feeling of being ready to take on another thing. And that might be, um, well, I wanted to do like that knit sweater and stuff too, but Maybe I'll throw in a uh, cross stitch. Uh, Samara's asking, did I ever finish the knitted sheep pillow? I did. So that project is checked off. I think we might have finished it on live here. Mm, I don't know if I finished it on live, but I know I worked on it a little bit on live. Um, I'll have to bring that down here again. It's upstairs on sitting on a chair but yes that feels good to have that project done that was a long-term project one that I had halfway done for ages and then finally I'm like this is getting done kind of like that that doily that I, that I did earlier this year out of that purple doily out of the um, sewing thread that one was sitting around for ages so I'm just I'm in the like finishing up all those old projects mode and actually I just kind of I, I I think I have kind of finished up a lot of the old ones. Oh, I got a, I got a pile of quilts to do yet. I did put um, the quilts in a bin, though, so I can bring them to my parents' house. That's where they'll get done. So the issue of finishing quilts is slightly addressed. It's, it's uh, the next step has happened, which is gathering them <laughs> to bring to uh, my parents' house and then maybe crank them out uh, with my mom but yeah I'm feeling like the need to be cleaned cleansed of all my unfinished project projects again but we'll get there <laughs> clean them all out use up all the supplies all those things I want to try that sweater pattern. Um, I have to do a gauge and all that sort of stuff, which I never do because uh, I don't do clothing, but I'll have to do a gauge for the sweater pattern that I got. And I'm going to try and use acrylic based yarn that I have already. So that won't be all the same size, but it'll be close. And if, if I stitch with the same, needles theoretically the gauge will be similar just there will be areas that will be looser and some will be tighter i think so i don't know that's that's my thought i want to basically test out the sweater by just like um using yarn that i already have so i'll have a finished sweater that's all scrappy and weird and and i'll have used up a pile of yarn which i want to do use it all up and then i actually want to like get real yarn for it and then like do a design on the front like a instarsha um thing like i mean actually like this guy on a sweater would be so cool actually that would be kind of fun like a big 
uh, bird with like some vines on that. That would be fun. But anyway, I want to do like, you know, a fun design on a sweater. So I think for that, I want to get like real yarn again, like where I get the right size and I get enough of the same balls of yarn uh, to do. So the sweater is the same color, except for whatever I do as a picture on the front. Uh, but I want to test it with the yarn that I have first, just to use up yarn and um, see how that goes. That might be a silly idea, but I don't know. At worst, I'll use up some yarn. All right, I think that will be that. For this thread, I am going to need some more, so that did not take us all the way. Um, but we barely have any left. <laughs> we do have these lazy days that'll take up a lot, but um, this is a good spot. I can start at the top of that leaf and finish this half. We've been lucky with where we've been ending with the leaves, I think, because a lot of them we ended where I just have to start a new thread and don't have to backtrack or anything. Man, if I get all those old projects done, I could break into the my bin of finished embroideries like all of these guys. It'd be fun to like maybe pick a bunch that kind of match or have a same theme and we could turn that into a quilt or we could make like a pile of zipper pouches out of them or something like that would be kind of fun. We have made some bags out of some of them. Two and three. Hey, Cassie. See, I gotta just come down this edge and I'll be like close to where I can. Um, pick up the back stitch again. I actually might get these um, French knots on the way back down, down to here. Because I'll be kind of in that position. We're getting there. At this point, I do think we'll be done a little early tonight. Which is fine, it's Friday. What's next week? Um, I think I might get out the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along again, just to be putting in some more time on that. Um, and I don't know if we'll do that the whole week. I'll have to see what else we got going on here too. But at the same time, it would be nice to move ahead in that project a little bit. Oh, we had talked about like getting the ABC quilt out and uh, like starting to do the actual quilt as you go stuff. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll start with, with, um, the Splendid Sampler 2 and do that for a day or two. Maybe we can get another block done. And then maybe we switch to the ABC quilt where we can, um, start doing the actual quilt as you go process where we trim down some of our finished blocks, put that little binding piece in or, and actually start attaching these as rows, not just our finished blocks anymore. That'd be kind of awesome. I don't have any corner blocks yet, but that's, that's fine. I can do like the first row will be three and the second row is like five. I can just start on that and I can always add in the row of three at the top and the bottom. Those are the ones with the corners. Um, once I figure out the corners, I can always add those to it. But yeah, I'd kind of like to get going on that because we have not, we've not done any of the, that, uh, quilt as you go stuff for that project yet. So that's what I think. We'll, we'll do that. We'll start with Splendid Sampler to project and then switch over to the quilting shenanigans of the ABC quilt. I like that idea. Start that process, finish all the prep for that. 
Ooh, gosh, we might run out of this thread too. <laughs> I keep forgetting like these uh, lazy daisies are huge and use up tons of thread. And we got all those little lines to do in the leaves yet. And that's it. I was hoping I'd have a lot of thread left over from from this so I could use it as my single strand for uh, the leaves, but I don't think I'm going to have any left. I'm going to cut another piece. Cut a fresh piece. Gosh, I don't even know if I'm going to make it to the end here. <laughs> Crazy. I think from here I'm going to jump over to that French knot, get him out of the way. Uh, and then I'm going to have to jump back down here. We're going to be cutting it close, um, playing thre thread chicken again here. Just enough. It's nice and happens. Ooh, massive lightning um, for Noeline. Um, two stitches, I think, will do. It's getting there. All right, last stitch of the vine. We still have to do the insides of those two leaves, but it's pretty just like that too. This would have been a fun one to color in, <laughs> like uh, with crayons or colored pencils. First, add a little tints to it and then do the black. That'd be kind of fun. And another loop there. There we go. All right. Um, let's grab. I need a single strand again. I'm going to have to cut a fresh piece for that. And I don't think I need it that long, though. Let's get like 18 inches instead of 24. I'm just grabbing a single strand out of here. What time I'm here every evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So uh, we're about halfway through. I'm here for about an hour each, each night. What side did I end up on? Oh, right in the middle. Okay, here we go. The pretty little lines. I just love all these little extra lines and cross hatching in this one. It's so fun. This just adds a lot, I think, to the leaves. Oh, I'm on uh, 11 a 11.30 a.m. in the future <laughs> in Australia. That's right. That's funny. The future.
Trying to come up under these other stitches and I haven't been that great at it. Sometimes I'm going right through them. So I think I'll start a fresh piece of thread. I'll have a little of this thread left I think but I'm going to start a fresh piece for, for up there. I think that'll just be easier. One more. Oh, I do actually have kind of a lot on here yet, but oh well, I'm gonna. I think I'm still gonna get a fresh one. I don't want to play chicken. Last little bit, then we're done. Right here. on one side and come down the other side. I think that's been working. I have basically museum hours for you, Noeline. I think museums, a lot of museums here are closed on Mondays. It's fun stitching with a single strand of thread. It feels so, like, fancy and delicate. that nice thin line. Come on, there we go. Oh, um, Sylvette's asking, hey Alyssa, I wanted to ask you, I want to use my embroidered bunny block in a quilt. Should I back it with woven fusible or something? Or will batting be sufficient? I, I've i never added woven fusible um, for embroidery in a quilt. I think typically it's going to be fine. Are you worried about like like stitching coming out, like like um, like the embroidery coming out, because I have not had any problem. Um, like for example, that first splendid sampler quilt. There's a bunch of embroidery in there. I've washed that quilt a zillion times, and all the embroidery is still in there just perfectly. And um, all it was it was against the batting. I didn't have any special backing to it. I mean, you you totally could. I just don't. It's probably not necessary. 
Oh, <laughs> um, oh, I'm gonna have to find that. Um, so, so let's say question two in a photo for your anniversary. It was our anniversary. You were wearing a fabulous necklace or brooch. Did you make it? I can't find anything like it. It's beautiful. It is a necklace. Um, you're referring to, it's a tulip. It's a, like a yellow tulip. I freaking love it so much. And it's like metal work on the outside and then um, beads like that were wired back and forth like a beaded bracelet sort of thing um, to make, to like fill in the shape of the tulip. I got it at a craft fair this summer. Um, I'm gonna have to look up the artist again. I think I saved the card for it. But I'll have to look up the artist and and I'll I'll try and find that for Monday. Let me actually just write that down. Um, pencil. Tulip necklace artist question mark there. But yeah, I love it. That was a that was a splurge. That was um my birthday gift basically from from John <laughs> that I picked out. It's just like a piece of art, I feel like, and I love it so much. And I used to do like a lot of bead stuff when I was little, and so it's like reminiscent of that too, and I just love like the tulips, like in general, so it was just right. Oh no, I, I did not make it, but I would have loved to be the one to figure that out and, and make those, because they are just so beautiful. But nope, I, I did not make it. It's one of those things, though, that's like, dang, that's a great idea and so cute. Wish I would have thought about it. But if I didn't think about it, at least I can, at least I can um, help the artist <laughs> or like purchase from the artist doing it. All right, let's take off the needle minder here. And there we go. We got our finished uh, birdie. So, all right, you guys, I think I'm gonna just leave it um, like this. I suppose let's take it out of the, the hoop. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Um, I, I do like the idea of making one of those fabric um, coil baskets. Uh, I gotta figure out how to do that yet. And like, this would be really cute like applique to the basket, I think. Um, like I think someone mentioned like it'd be cute for like a trick or treat bag or something like that. So like, let's say we got like really close to the edge and like applique, applique that to the basket I think would be really kind of pretty or maybe we, we cut it out like in an oval shape or something, whatever shape makes sense. and. And then uh, stick it on like a fabric, like a tall fabric basket that we could maybe do some handles or stuff on. So it'd be like a fancy trick or treat bag. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not even round. Maybe it has like a squarish base, so it's more like a tote bag. I don't know. I, I, I like I like that idea still. But for now, it is just gonna sit like so. Um, I think it looks really nice on the back too. Looking good. But yeah, there we go. Our finished uh, embroidery of the month, our raven uh, embroidery, all done. That one was really fun to stitch. I would love to do this one in color too, I think would be really fun. Uh, someone mentioned doing it in a metallic thread and dang, wouldn't that be like the prettiest thing ever too. Um, I'd have to have a like an end game plan for that because that would be like just too pretty to just, <laughs> you know, not have a plan for. But all right, I think we are going to uh, call it a bit early tonight. We'll call it there. So uh, uh, thanks again for hanging out with me this week, uh, working on that Raven embroidery. I love it. Um, one of my favorites for sure. So this one will be available for the week still. And then uh, uh, we'll be switching over to our new embroidery of the month. Uh, in October and this will also be switched over to the new fabric so starting October we will have new fabric in all of our kits um, we won't be bringing back every single kit I don't think uh, they'll stay as a PDF uh, but not as kits all of them so we're working that out yet um, and then uh, we're sold out of a bunch of the old kits so we're having that 40% off sale right now of all the 
of all the kits because we're replacing the fabric soon so uh, all of the muslin uh, kits uh, will be switched out so thanks for your orders on that we are sold out of a few and we're got we have pretty low stock on a few of them uh, so make sure to check on like you know some say like two left or one left on it um, if there's something that you're wanting um, and then uh, for another 15 minutes or so if you place an order I will throw in a free mystery gift if the order is uh, $20 or more uh, so those are all the things happening right now. Uh, we got one more full week, though, before the next embroidery of the month. So that one's going to be fun. And that one will be on the new fabric as well. So uh, all our subscribers um, for the embroidery of the month, or if you're just getting it without the subscription, you'll get to play with the new fabric. Uh, awesome. So have a lovely weekend, everyone. And I will see you on Monday. Uh, good night.